Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing the HYVFD and correctly working with it in terms of setting it up with programming, as well as looking at how to configure it inside of Mach 3 if you're looking to control the speed and also cycle the unit on and off with your G540. These are questions that are coming up all the time, and of course I get questions on general VFDs, but this is the one I recommend, and of course, uh, typically the one most used. So. I believe this diagram basically breaks it down ultimately the easiest. And you can see our AC power input here is for single phase power input with three phase power output. What does that mean? Okay, you have your RST here, and that's going to be once again for your live leads going in. Now if it's 220, you're naturally going to have two power leads coming in, and then your ground lead over here. Now if you don't have 220, if you have 110 volt, you'll have a live and a neutral. And again, that would be coming on this side, and the instructions with the VFD will explain to you how to connect that. R and T can be used for your hot would be R, T would be neutral, and then coming over here, UVW is your three power output phase for your motor. So it's outputting the power leg on three phases. It does not matter, once again, how you connect your spindle to UV and W as far as power. So what pins one, two, and three will all be allocated to either UV or W. It's completely arbitrary as they all supply power. Now as far as the ground, that would be pin four on your spindle's female connector. As far as your ground also for your AC power input would also be allocated to the ground. That's why I also sell a terminal splitter ground kit, and I'll put a link in the description below to allow you to connect multiple leads to this one terminal because the unit only has a single ground. Many of you find that out after you purchase it. I'm trying to make you aware of it because, again, maybe you won't find my videos uh, as you need them, so to speak. Everything else up here, though, very simple. If you're having any questions, this really breaks it down. Now, overall, it says output connected with spindle motor, so everyone, once again, knows UVW. Those are your hot leads. Once again, they go to pins one, two, and three, and it's completely arbitrary on what letter you connect to that pin. The ground, however, is a must to be on pin four, and it goes to number nine here, also known as the uh, ground terminal. You can see the ground symbol there. So again, very simple, and a question that comes up commonly. Okay, I'm, I'm hooking up a 220 VFD. Where do I put the ground? Well, we know the ground over here, you have one ground. So I'll say it again. You're going to connect your AC ground from this side over here. Now we all know, once again, I'm going to state it again, you have only one terminal here for ground. That means you technically should split this with a terminal splitter, which is why I designed my VFD ground splitter kit. Either way, you can attach the other lead here. It's not as neat, and I don't recommend usually doing that because you're going to have two terminals that are locked in under a single terminal uh, hold down, meaning there's only one ter screw terminal here. So again, putting the VFD ground splitter, it really makes a difference in terms of how you wire everything so it's neat. That's all. Um, it, the effect will be the same on whichever you choose. So again, once you understand the wiring, and you see where you're going, then I would highlight right over to our VFD programming settings. The programming settings are a must, and they must be gone through carefully, guys. So again, take your time. Don't rush. Don't do this after you come home from an 8-hour, 10-hour, 12-hour shift. Sit, wait until you're well-rested, and then sit down and focus on what you're doing, because if you don't do that, you're going to have problems. See this first paragraph here states, first reset the VFD to factory settings. You don't know where the thing has been, and that's absolutely true. Um, it covers exactly what you're going to hit, which is PD013, and that's how you're going to set it. And then you can see here, this paragraph covers the programming, how to set up the programming, meaning what, you're going, what buttons you're going to press. So once that's all set, you're going to come down here, and you're going to please input these settings in this order, which are step one, step two, three, four, and five. The first area of concern is setting PD005, you want to set that to 400 hertz. Then you're going to set PD004, 400 hertz. And you're going to go right down this list until that's all correctly set. Now, the last one is going to be PD144 equals 3000. That's so we assure that our spindle will hit 24,000 RPM, which they're all ready to do. So once that's all done, then set the following parameters below, and again, we're going to go with step six, which is PD141, 
Step 7, PD142. And again, you can see everything here. I broke it down. Set this to the spindle's voltage rating on the side of the spindle. Input the amps written on the side of the spindle. Then we're going to go PD143 equals 2. And last but not least, step 9, PD070 equals 0. That's so we can actually control the VFD with a potentiometer. Now, for my guys out there who are going to be setting this VFD up in order to be controlled by Mach 3 in terms of cycling the unit on and off, which you will require a relay for, and then on top of that, manipulating the speed, you're going to have to have a cable built for that so it can interface from your controller with the G540 and its PWM signal to the VFD itself. So again, these are the additional settings that would have to be done if you're planning on controlling, once again, cycling the unit on and off from your controller as well as manipulating its speed. So you can see I wrote that here. And here's what we're going to do. Step 11, PD001, then goes to 1. Step 12, PD002 equals 1. So again, these settings are critical so that we can once again have control of the VFD through the software, and that's what most of you are looking to do. Now the last step, as far as programming, also configure the VFD jumper that's located under your VFD's cover where you attach its power cables as illustrated below. It must be on the left side, and you can see right here that we are on the left side. So again, these are the areas you want to pay attention to. It's a must. So once this is all done and you have everything set in the configuration for what you're using, if you're not using or planning on uh, controlling the speed of the spindle through the software, then you're done right here. Where all this comes to step nine, you're complete. If you are going to naturally control it through software, meaning the VFD, and manipulate the spindle speed as well as turning the unit on and off with a relay, this is what you're going to want to do. So once that's done, we're going to come over here, and I want to identify some things because these are some things that are always coming up. Now, this is my label for when a client orders one of my systems, and I build one of my interface cables with the VFD and also incorporating the controls for the relay. I like to use a single cable. Um, the GX16 six-pin connectors I do have in stock, and you can see how I've got this label, GX16 male six-pin VFD interface connector, internal wiring diagram, lead colors represented by labels text. So if we look at this, you can see how everything is allocated. Very, very simple. I even got the relay settings up here for Mach 3. Go to port and pins. Go to output number 1. Put the checkbox. Put 1 and pin 17. So port 1, pin 17 is a must. And we can see exactly what we've got going on here. Now, why do I use a 6-pin connector? Because you can see the ground drain is allocated to terminal 6. So we need that. A lot of guys seem to forget that they have a ground drain. It's an absolute must, and I've said this in numerous videos, that you must use double shielded cable. I recommend it highly. Um, it's going to definitely save you a lot of headaches in the long run. The remaining connections, remaining five connections, are used for not only your relay, but also for speed control. So spindle relay, normal open, pin one. Spindle relay com, number two. And that's, once again, just going to close the circuit because it's considered a dry contact relay. And that means there's no uh, power or amps running to it. It's simply just closing a circuit. That's what cycles the unit on and off. VFD ground, G540 terminal pin 7 is number 3. VFD output, G540 terminal pin number 8, 4. And VFD positive 10 volt DC is G540 terminal pin 9. Now, why these are all different colors are because I allocate these colors inside of my controllers. So if you guys ever have to service one of my controllers, you know exactly what you're doing. I cannot tell you how many other vendors refuse to put diagrams on what they sell. And it, to me, it's just ridiculous. You guys need to know and understand what you're working with. And this makes it all too easy. If you see a red lead and you know that it's going to pin five, then we already know what it is because it's allocated on the front. So again, very, very simple. Now as we come down here, this is the GX16 female 6-pin VFD interface cable wiring diagram. Lead color is represented by the label's text. Once again, same thing. This is the cable that will interface and plug into this connector that is once again mounted on your system. So we need to think about this. We've got here the GX16 female 6-pin VFD interface cable wiring diagram. And again, lead color is represented by the label's text. 
And again, it's nothing any different. You can see here, all of our colors are once again allocated. They may be slightly different in color, but the terminal allocations are the same. Once again, leaving it up to the end user to validate everything that's there and connect it. Now, once again, very simple connection. And when you use a six pin GX16 connector, you are able to control everything with one cable. That means speed, manipulation up and down, as well as cycling your spindle on and off. So these are things to really keep in mind, and that's why I only use one cable. And again, it's double shielded, and I highly recommend using the 20 gauge double shielded DS flexion because it is ultra flex cable. And for this application, it works perfectly. Once again, you only have a single cable, and the interface is very simple. So now that we've covered that, if you're building it yourself, now you know exactly what you're going to be dealing with. Now let's get uh, the settings covered for Mach 3 use. And again, we're going to start up here, and I'm just going to scroll it down. So motor outputs, once again, you can see I have highlighted for the spindle. Now these are naturally, your motor outputs are going to be for the 540, but over here, spindle, uh, we've got checkbox for enabled, step pin 14, step port 1 and 1. Okay, come down. Now we're going to go with output signals, and you can see output 1, output 2, once again enabled, port 1, pin 17, pin number, and then you can also have the secondary enabled if you're going to use two relays. So coming over here, and you can see spindle setup, and we've got relay control. Clockwise, output 1. Counterclockwise is output 2. Now you can see M3, M4, those are your actual M commands to, once again, command the spindle to rotate in whichever direction you select. So that's up to you, but once again, you can always use a second relay if you'd like to control clockwise or counterclockwise motion. I've done a video on that. If you'd like to see it, of course, just search my channel for it. You'll see it. Um, a motor control, use spindle motor output. Naturally, that must be enabled because we're going to control the spindle from naturally Mach 3. PWM control is a must because we're looking for that 0 to 10 volts coming from the 540, which is actually going to be allocated um, using the VFD to speed. So again, just think of it like, you know, you got one volt would be equivalent to like 10% and going all the way up to 100% at 10 volts. So just think of it like that, and that's what's represented on your VFD. So once again, these settings are all good. Good to go. Now, PWM base frequency, you want to keep in mind, I recommend starting with 10. I usually do not ever see anyone need to go above that. Um, again, that's like the base setting for the 540. Minimum PWM is once again 5%. Works fantastic. I don't see anyone needing to actually manipulate that. Okay? And you can see the final selection will be under pulley selection. You will select pulley number one, minimum speed zero, maximum speed 24,000 because your spindle will be set up to run at its maximum speed, which is 24,000, ratio one. And that is it, guys. That's all we're going to do. And you would naturally click apply. That's what you're looking at doing. So again, keep this in mind. I would go through the exact steps that I laid out. I hope it will bring you guys the success you're looking for. And again, once you see how easy this is, if you break it down in the steps that I've shown, it's going to really, really streamline your process of understanding more of what you're working with with VFDs. And of course, you won't be as afraid of working with such high voltages and so on and so forth. So again, I thank you all for your support. Take care.